Man, Diamond Stone TV, man. Let the people know who I got in front of the camera today. Hey, you got Dr. Mug Simpson. We'll have a gold day. Okay, man. Hey, man. Um, go, go and let the people know, man, for the people that don't know right here, um, what you're doing out here, man, in Fort Worth, Texas, man. Oh, uh, man, you know, I've just been really just trying to, you know, become become who I, I'm supposed to be, who I'm destined to be. And uh, I done done a lot of things, man, like from grills to tattoos. And, and, to, I, and I was about to say, people that's in the city, bro, yeah. like, I don't know how far... You, uh -huh. you have reached with the right. you know, with the tattoos, man, like, but I know man, I, I know in the Walmart, city. I go Walmart <laughs> anywhere. Yeah, they gonna ask me for a tattoo. You know what I'm saying? So it's like you know I I got a long story or whatever, but we can you know we can chop it up real quick. I was really born in the church. That's how I got to Fort Worth, Texas. I was born in the church. My dad and my my mother they moved down here with our pastor right. in West Virginia. Right. I was four years old. So all I knew was the church. So I really wanted to preach. I really wanted to be a preacher because I idolized the pastor as the man. Right. He had the Porsche. He had uh, the the tailor made suits. He had everything. The gazelles. You know they was clean. Right. So I wanted to be the man. I seen how everybody. I seen how my father traveled to you know be with him. Right. So long story short, my old man. Got strung out on crack. You know what I'm saying? So it made me like go against everything that I was I was uh brought up on. Right. About God and this, that, and the next. So I really start challenging God at twelve years old. Like, that shit ain't real. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. And I had that kind of attitude. So I think I was like thirteen years old and uh we was over at my homeboy house. OG one night came out. He had just come home from Terra TDC uh, uh, unit. It's, it's called Terra, the Terra unit. Right. And it, it was real. Uh, it was serious. You know what I'm saying? Like it, Percy probably got one of them uh, stories in there. You know what I'm saying? Where he talking about Terra? Yeah. One of the Texas prisons. And he came home, and at my 13 year old mind, when I seen him, I was like, dang, I can't wait. I can't wait to go to prison. I'm going to kill him off when I come home. So that's why I got all these tattoos like this everywhere because OG One Night was hit up. OG One Night. OG One Night. And you, you got the tattoos all the way around your uh, head. He had, he had like the teardrops. He had the wave, the Farrakhan waves going to the side. He had the big Duke Blue Devil with the pitchfork on his back. 13, I was amazed. And like, like I'm saying, as a kid, I always idolized the man. You get what I'm saying? I wanted to be the man. So at 13, I seen OG one night as the man. So I knew I had to do some type of street something. I couldn't cook dope. Right. I ain't know how. I don't come from that. So I don't know how to sell drugs. I don't know how to do nothing. But the the word of God gave me so much of a uh, character. To where if I said I'm gonna do it, right, it's done, because I know you can speak it into existence. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. I know greater is He that's in me, that's in the world. So I start taking everything back that I thought was mine. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. So I'm running in traps and doing all type of stuff. That's how I got on my on my hustle. And I went to jail a couple times, and an OG came to me. He was like, "Man, look, man, you doing all this petty death and stuff is gonna get you like a three times, and you're gonna be gone." If I buy you out, you got to step your game up. I'm with it. Come get me. Yeah. I, I got some money at the house. I just couldn't get it to you. You know, being flamboyant, my ego, don't know nothing about humility. So get out. And he tell me about, like, yeah, hey, man, we can start getting these Rolexes. All you got to do is just. Right. And, and at this time, how old was you again? I'm At this time, you, I'm you're 16. You're a little bit older. Okay. I'm 16 yeah. now. Like, I was doing the petty theft at first. Yeah. Uh breaking in cars, breaking in houses, all that type of stuff, you know and what, what I'm saying? And what were you scared, like, cause I know you, 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 I know you're a little bit older than me, mm -hmm. um, like what you scared, like, you know what I'm saying? At that time, like you was going to, for like your I, life, you were going to be I was killed? just, I'm a, I had a short man complex, so I ain't really had no fear. Once I said it, it, it like, it break the fear for me. You get what I'm saying? Yeah, 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 yeah. And it, it, I just be trying to see if I can do it. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. And like, man, just breaking down them little stories, man. There's so many close calls that 
being killed or whatever is crazy. Yeah. Like, oh, so you don't actually? Yeah, you, you, big close calls. I like saved my homeboy life from getting shot, and then he bring the gun down to me to shoot me, and the bullet wasn't no bullets in it. Wait, wait, wait. Okay, hold on. Say it again. He shot at my homeboy. He shot at your homeboy. He didn't shoot him. He shot at him. I threw a chair at him to make the shot go somewhere else. Right. He brought the gun right back to me, and it didn't shoot. And I got out the door. Damn, but yeah, like, God been like, 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 bro, like this guy did, did, knows. Did, 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 like, did that slow you down? Nah. Make you go harder. Yeah, yeah. I, we, you know, we Tupac era. We gangster. I'm listening to No Limit, Master P. We bout it. That's that's what I grew up on. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So we really the beginning of that young OG. A while not listening to nobody doing what we want to do, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So that's why the big homie had to sit me down like, hey, you doing a lot of petty petty stuff, so let me get you on a on a higher level because I know you will do it. Right. You see what I'm saying? He knew I'd do it. So he started giving me the game on running in jewelry stores. And he started telling me how, like, if you go in here, you're going to come out with almost $20,000. And they not gonna follow you out the store because the insurance won't cover them. And I'm like, huh? So now he telling me a whole bunch of game that I didn't know about. But what he was doing is he was paying me pennies. Right. And that's one thing you can't do to somebody. You can't like chump them. Right. You can't chump them or they gonna figure out the game. You get what I'm saying? Right. Okay. So as I start growing and figuring out the game, I went to uh, Polito Jewelers. He's right across from, uh, used to be right across from Ferriton Field right. by uh, University in Lancaster. I'm casing, trying to see what he got in there. I know he sell Rolexes. I go in there, <clears throat> I'm looking, I'm looking, and I look behind the wall, and he got a Mac 11 on the wall. The first thing my mind says is he ain't got insurance. He gonna kill you. You take something out of here, he gonna, he gonna shoot the kill. Yeah. I just felt it. I felt it in my gut. So, you know, I ain't I ain't bashful. Like, I'm, I'm with it. So I, as soon as I went in, I was like, hey man, I just wanna know, you know, let you know I get all kind of Rolexes and everything if you ever wanna check them out. And he, he, he was kind enough to go get the wholesale book. Brought the wholesale book back and told me, hey, I can get you 7,000 for this watch. I can get you 10,000 for this watch. I'm getting 1,500 before this for watches. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. So that's what happened. I, I, as soon as I got that plug with him, I start bringing him watches. I'm blowing up. Now my name and the MUG market and all this, we blowing up because now we able to look like something. We being able to throw money and do all the type of stuff that everybody else right, is right, doing. Right, right. Making a name for ourselves. So uh, I'm doing this spree like I'm doing solo. And uh, the guy that turned me on turned the whole circuit of young niggas on. Yeah. And they was going crazy. They was going crazy so much that this what brought the ID out. Remember now you got to go in the store and they ask for your ID to right, see the fact. Rolex or to see the jewelry. That's where that came from because they was running in the stores just taking watches. Taking them. You know what I'm saying? So on this one particular day, a dude that I know, he got followed home after robbing the pawn shop on uh, Pioneer Parkway. Right. Robbed the pawn shop, got the Rolex, didn't know a, a civilian followed him home. Right. I know. He went in the house. Uh, in in less than five ten minutes, his whole house was surrounded by the uh, APD, Arlington Police Department. Right. And what happened is he told on the big homie, and the big homie told on me. He said I was the ringleader. Mm. You get what I'm saying? Right. So I got this this big case of uh, uh, stealing Rolexes from twenty thousand to a hundred thousand. I'm seventeen years old. Uh, this is my first case. Uh, so how much did it say that you had stolen? No, I had stole like eight hundred thousand dollars worth of watches. Eight hundred thousand. And what's so crazy is that guy Polito's Jewelers. Yeah. He called me and said, I got all my people to buy, get their watches back. I only had one case. 
That's what that man did for me. The one who had the Uzi behind the wall, yeah. back 11, yeah. he got all the people that he sold them to, to give them back because they were stolen. You wow. get what I'm saying? Yeah, 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 yeah. So it, it erased all the yeah, cases yeah. for me. You get what I'm saying? Man. And it's just like, that's how God be working in, on my behalf. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, because how many years was you looking to get? Like, I'm looking, I'm, at that time, I'm, I'm facing uh, like 25 years. I'm facing like 25 years. I stayed in the county almost like 11 months. 11 months? I, I stayed in the county like 11 months. Um, My bond was like, I want to think it was like three million, but uh, what happened was I had a a court appointed lawyer, a court appointed yeah, lawyer. Yeah, 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 yeah. And he seen I was returning senior for uh, this private school, Ambassadors of Christ Christian Academy. Yeah. For tailback, and he coming there, and he getting on my ass like, "Hey, man, you know you in the newspaper for going uh." For for being the uh, senior tailback, I ain't even going to that school. That's how I'm cutting him off. I'm finna go to Hills. I'm finna do this. I'm finna do that. And he cut me short. He was like, man, you really going to prison if you don't get no help. Right. So you had a football career. Yeah. I, I'm a football player from Pee Wee football. Yeah. Yeah. That's how we probably know everybody from every side because we've we, we been in Pee Wee football since like 85. Right. Yeah. So... I'm, we real athletes, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I just chose like the money. Yeah. I, I went straight for the money. I ain't had no patience. I ain't had nothing like that. Long story short, somebody come up with some money to get me out. I get out. I want to say my grandfather. And uh, what happened was I got three years on that case. For the theft, twenty thousand to a hundred thousand, got it dropped to theft, twenty thousand to a hundred thousand, so it'd be a third degree felony instead of a first degree felony. And uh, I went to do my time. When I came back, that's when I was this mug. That's when I was became mug. Like I didn't the, 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 the streets gave you that oh, name, though. Man, I, yeah, I didn't went to TDC. They call me Mean Mug. Cause yeah. I can't see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, I be yeah. squinting all the time. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? They like, what you mean mugging for? Yeah. And that's what they call me in prison. You know what I'm saying? And I'm from Meadowbrook, M U G. Yeah, yeah. So they yeah. put it together. And uh what's crazy is that um that's where we start getting our credibility at. Yeah. In T D C. Like Meadowbrook, we through there, like they know who we is. We ripping the logo, you get what I'm saying? You know the mug face that yeah, you see in yeah, the yeah, office. Yeah. Count up, be having it on. Yeah. Uh, you know, that's just our little our little yeah, slope. Little, yeah. And um the whole thing, I went to T D C and they let me do eighteen months. I went to uh I got my GED before I caught the chain in the county. And then I went to uh like a computer class, some type of college in TDC and then it let me make my first parole. So I got like a FI3 and in 90 days I was out. So I did like 18 months on it. Yeah. So, so when you came home, you basically like, I mean, I know it was term for you because everybody heard just, you was all on the media. Yeah, like I ain't never felt that before. Like I ain't never felt coming home from prison. Like that's a whole nother feeling. It's like a high. Like you elevated, people love you. You back, they bringing you gifts. It's like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, on, yeah. On some, on some uh, Bible days type of stuff. Like they really come and looking for you and, oh, we missed you and stuff like that. And it's kind of like a, a shock because you ain't seen nobody. You ain't heard nothing from nobody. You know, you, you, you think people just like forgot well, about you. Well, I mean, you. out of sight, out of mind. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. I had to learn all that. And as soon as I was in sight, I was the man, quote unquote. So I was trying to live up to that. You get what I'm saying? And as, as I was trying to live up to that, uh, me and my partner, we had did a drug deal. I had went to Austin to do a drug deal to uh, get some money to go to Hong Kong. Cause we about to really uh, turn up with the gold, buying the gold, right. and the diamonds. Y'all had a little this. connection over there. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. And we needed more money to send the stuff back. 
So we needed to go hit a lick. You get what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And come back with some more money. So my brother was going to UT, University of uh, Texas at Austin. Right. So that's why we had a little connection with the with the with the dope boy. And as I'm going to go do all that, I didn't know when I when me and my partner, Big Man, rest his soul. Big Man, we go to Austin, you know, go get this bread, go get this money. And on the way there, Twisted Black had just got out. Twisted Black. Twisted Black. He had just right. got out the first time. And this was in the early days. This is 2000. 2000. This 2002. This 2002. Yeah. And uh, he, he, he was on there, he had a mixtape, a gospel mixtape. And I like, oh, man, I don't want to hear this. I don't, don't like want to hear this. And then that's when I really denounced God. Right. I denounced God. I was like, you know, I'm God over my life. Ain't no, ain't no devil over my life. I can, I create this. Went out there, long story, got shot by the police at a drug deal gone bad. We kicked in the door, went in the house, missed the door. The dude in the door called the law. And that's how they came in. When they came in, they tried to stop me from running. Right. They shot me. They shot you. Shot me right here. And they, I had a I had a duffel bag with 10,000 in it. It was me and Lil Danny. I don't know if you heard of DK, our partner that got killed. Yeah. yeah. He, he, me and him had our money in the duffel bag. And, uh... When when the when the police shot the gun, it hit me. I raised my duffel bag. It's a it's a bullet hole in my shorts and blood streaming down. And I just rocked him. I hit him and when he fell to the ground, his gun came out. When his gun came out, I I jumped on the gun. As soon as I grabbed the gun, the police got on my back and both of the dudes that was in the house got on my back. Big man who went with me, he had already jumped out the window. We up four flights. The police got him downstairs. I, instead of dropping the clip, I was so scared and nervous. Instead of dropping the clip down, I emptied every round of the police gun so he wouldn't kill me. So as soon as I was through emptying the gun, everybody got up off of me. I ran out the house. Going down to the, fourth, to the first floor, all the police was like, freeze, we gonna count to three or we gonna shoot to kill. And I just gave it up. Went to the hospital, got the catheter, wasn't in the hospital, but like 30 minutes, did the CAT scan and everything. Locked up with the, with the uh, police officer, taking me to the detective's office. Yeah. We get in the detective's office. He, he just cussing me out. He like, you know why you, you know why you ain't dead? You know why you ain't paralyzed? He just started dumping out my duffel bag. It's a bullet hole in every dollar bill. I say, what? It's a bullet hole, and I'm looking at it. It's a bullet hole. When it hit me, bro, I didn't even feel it. It felt just like that. So fast forward to the, to, to the detective dumping out the money. Yeah. That's when I realized, like, dang, in God we trust. Even when I denounced him. You get what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I, I feel like he knew I was going to become this person. Damn. And, and so I got, I got 15 years for that. 15 years. 15 years for that and end up doing six years on that. I was only out for 18 months. Right. And in that 18 months, we started Have a Gold Day all the way back then. But that's how you started? That's then. how we started. Yeah, we started the grills and everything all the way back then. I was uh, going to barber college, and one of my dudes who was going with us, he was from New York. Right. So the first people who was doing our grills here in Fort Worth was Mike on Fulton Street in New York. Yeah. Back so, in, what, what, in so, what, so what year did you get out? I got out on parole the first time yeah. from the Rolexes. Yeah. That's when I started the grill business. You get what I'm saying? And getting the diamonds and doing all this, and we were selling grills in Meadowbrook, and we was... Rapping and yeah, that's but then the I, second time you, you did the six. The second time I did six. The six piece. Right. Did. So I was out 18 months off of that two. You get mm -hmm. what I'm saying? And then right after my birthday, I get locked up again. With right. This new case shot and everything in Austin. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. And that's when I went to do the stretch. So during the stretch, I got tatted like I am now. Yeah. Like with the head done, the face done. 
uh, everything, and and I be, I always was an artist, so that's why I learned tattooing at in prison. And when you in prison and you a hustler, you always thinking of a plan. Right, right, you know right, what I'm right, saying? right, 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 right. Uh, so I was on what was next. And you know, everybody was doing grills. Big T started doing grills. I was with a couple of other people, uh, C Mac and KD, when we first started. And they was at the Big T in Dallas. So, you know, I just didn't want to come out and try to pick back up where, where I had left off. I wanted to start something new. So that's why I started the tattoo thing. You get what I'm saying? That's where I knew you from. Yeah, that's, that's where, you know, that's yeah, where yeah. everybody knows yeah, me from. Yeah, you know everybody. What I'm saying? I remember back in school, people was like, I'm going to move. I'm going to move. You like, wow. who is mud? Yeah, nah, for real. <laughs> wow. Yeah, I remember people like, saying it in Meadowbrook, in Meadowbrook. I'm mud, tattooing mud. my yeah. partner's kids now, and it's, it's like, it's crazy. And it's like, I start watching other dudes in the gold jewelry game, and I start noticing, like, wow, it's still going. It's still booming. And I start dibbling and dabbling with it. Right, 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 right. And uh, I, I caught on. Oh, it's algorithms. Oh, it's ads. Oh, it's the internet. Oh, it's social media. Yeah. I'm old. I'm 41 years old, so I'm trying to walk in that 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 wisdom. But at the same time, I, I, I like being with the youngsters. You know what I'm saying? Because they always hit. Like, yeah. this dude here didn't show me so much with the tattoo game that we don't got to draw on a piece of paper no more. We can print it right off the phone and put it right on you. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? And that's blowing my mind. You get what I mean? I'm used to the old way. Matter of fact, in prison, we tattooing with the steel wool from the push broom. Yeah. We cut nose out. We cut nose out <laughs> tattooing, man. And that's a single needle, so you know the kind of pain we go through. And uh, like that's, you know, so now we have a gold day. My biggest mission is to make our people aware Right. To make our people aware. We got Grills Kitchen about to start up here. We got uh, Inky Tales about to go down. We got a lot of stuff about to right. go down. It, it just let people know, like, you know what I'm saying, oh, the background. Yeah. Um, you, 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 you drew those Yeah, yourself. I did all that. Th those are our characters. Right. Uh, what I try to do also is, uh, in immersion art with everything, I've been understanding we missing content. That's why I look up to y'all. Cause y'all, y'all stay on it. Y'all get content. Y'all pushing that content, and that's all everything is. And exactly. now we're in that era where we're capturing content. Yeah, you get what I'm saying. Facts. Fact. And so you know, I'm just trying to catch on, get my uh, social media presence uh, organically. I don't want to, you know, be one of them ones that buy uh, views or or buy friends or buy do all that. I'm trying to do it organically. So right. we've been really, I'm talking about marketing hard with the radio commercials, with we've been traveling, Texarkana, Oklahoma, uh, Oakland, Boston. Right. Like we I've been out there. Yeah. We've been out there like getting the name out there. And um we got a we got a few things coming with uh uh Road Run Semo. And uh we we starting like a youth program and all type of stuff, man. Like we just trying to elevate the just hood, elevate. man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because like we we just keep going in circles, doing the same thing same over shit. and over. Yeah. And uh, like right now we got the power. Yeah, facts, facts. Right now we got the power.